Hello viewers and a very warm welcome back to another unboxing video. Um, I can't remember which one this is now, I'm probably getting to the 20s. Um, this is just a short video to look at some of the things that I've bought more recently off of eBay. Uh, some of these I've actually had four or five weeks now and I actually can't remember what some of them are. Uh, I've got quite a pile to get through, so this may be about 20 minutes this one, with 25 at a push, depending if I test anything. But uh, I can't remember exactly what's here, so um, I'm not sure what I'll be testing, if anything. So uh, let's get started. Okay, let's start with the little one. Double box this one. It says JVC GR DV. 4L. I don't know what that is now. Oh, I remember now. This is more recent buy actually. It's an early JVC camcorder, Mini DV. It was sold to me as untested, if I remember rightly. So it's a DVX4. It's got a screen on it. Yes, it has. It's all metal build, it's very cold. It's been down here in my studio. That's in pretty good condition. You've got a scratch on the battery cover. Is there a battery in there? Open to release, to eject. Oh, there we go. Yes, it's got a battery with it, a genuine one as well. Probably won't hold a charge now. Let's get this big one out of the way. This one came recently, actually. Certainly packed it well. There's all sorts in this one. If I remember rightly, say focus and video star camera. Let's check what's in this box. Had loads of accessories with it. Yeah, I've gone to town packing it. Let's open up the main bit. I think this is the camera. It's got a bit of a soft spot for this particular model of camera. It's actually a clone of a JVC GRC1. The, um, the red one from Battle Future Movies. Excellent job of hacking. If only everybody could do it like this. Sometimes you get some stuff and it's just they just don't seem to care once they've had the money, you chuck it in anything just to get it out of the house onto you. There we go. There we go, the handle's missing unfortunately off the top. But uh let me close a look there. This is the Focus of Video Star version, exactly the same camera, it's got a different badge on it. Tube based, um, I think it's a Vidicon or Saticon tube. Use the VHSC tapes. Every one I've had so far has worked. Um, sometimes the um, tape mechanism can be a little bit stubborn because they've not been used for 20 years or more. Just take a little bit of coaxing to get them running again. There's a power supply. So I've already got this camera, but um, a lot of the accessories here I don't have. So I guess I really bought it more for the um, accessories. And it was cheap as well. This is the main part I was after. A dedicated power supply. So you can charge your battery on it separately. When you can on the actual one. This is the one that you normally get. But uh, I wanted this one. This is a bit more beefier. handheld microphone. I haven't seen one of these for a while. I used to use one of these, one of those little cassette recorders as a kid. National, so it's a National Panasonic. Low impedance. Uh, 
And here we are, another thing I wanted is a little character generator. It's quite peculiar how it works actually. Let's show it to the camera over there. Basically, you unplug the viewfinder into that socket there, and then this socket goes into where the viewfinder goes on the camera. And uh, that sits on the hot shoe basically. And it lets you, uh, allows you to add characters, titles. It's just a cable, is it? Oh, that's the viewfinder itself. There we go, let's get that on quick. It always looks horrible without the viewfinder. In. I was careful when I plugged those in because they've got the little pins on. But there we go, it's much better now it's got a viewfinder on. Try to be as quick as I can so you're not all getting bored. RF modulator, a video connecting lead, BNC and audio. This will be batteries by the weight of it. Yeah. And this, I remember right, it's got one of those long omnidirectional microphones. Shahanda. I have actually already got one of these and I forgot I had it. But I could have used that recently in a shoot I was doing because it's telescopic. Which is very handy. It's in a rubber mount as well to, to avoid any vibration. It takes one AA battery, if I remember rightly. Right. I think I got that quite cheap actually, I think it was about, about I want to say 32 quid posted for all of that, which I thought was a great buy. I think that was one of the biggest boxes here actually. Go to this one next. I think there are a couple of old video cameras amongst all this. I think this might be a TV. About this, it is. Well, I think it is. Is it a TV? It's heavy. Whatever it is, it's heavy. Have a look. Oh, it's my power supply. That was it. Bench power supply. I've been after one of these for ages. Been messing about using those little um, multi voltage adapters, but we just haven't got enough amps. Was new old stock was sold to me as. Forgot about this. There we go. See that on there. Now this one, a lot of these you see on eBay. I've got a fan on the back, um, but it makes it quite noisy, and obviously fans do go eventually. So I've been keeping my eye out for one with the heat sink instead. No moving parts equals no noise. So while you're filming, it's even better. But that goes up to 30 volts, if I remember rightly. Oh, I'm glad that's come. Completely forgot about that. Uh, this is a TV. I remember now, so I said to the lady, I said, make sure you pack it well. I think it's the colour one. It's a colour 5 inch or 6 inch CRT. She's written on there, look. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. I suggest you open it this way up. So if it's okay in there. She replied to my message afterwards saying I've already packed it, I've only just seen your message. So hopefully she's done a good job. And it's upside down. It's got those um, burn marks there though, which is from the flex. And they've been sat in storage for years. The flex reacts with the cabinet plastic. I see it a lot, especially on Commodore stuff. And it looks like it's okay, it survived. It's a Satio. See that on there? It's a Satio CTR7. Colour TV clock radio. Should we plug it in? Let's test something. Plug it in. Hopefully it won't go bang. In fact, I want to check the fuse first, really. But I haven't got a screwdriver at hand, so... Hopefully it'll be alright. Because half the time with these things, they put a 13 out fuse in it, which should only be a 3 or a 5. Let's just make sure it's... Switched off first. Power off. Oh, the clock's lit up. 
Okay. FM. A bit crackly on the selector there. Let's see if the TV powers up. Is it coming on? Yes, it is. And this is a colour one. Usually these are black and white. I've got quite a few of these. But this one's colour. Obviously, you won't get a signal because it's analog. But uh, and unfortunately, there's no composite video input on the back. Um, you've got DC in, focus adjustment, screen adjustment, degauss on the side there. Contrast, brightness, colour, AFT on off, antenna, aerial connection, and that's it on an earphone socket. But um, I've got one of those uh, modulators that allows you to plug a composite video via RF, so I better get a signal to it that way. Oh, the little battery uh, memory backup on the back there, 9 volt battery for the clock. Let's see if there's anything on the radio. In highs of 8 Celsius. And for an update, any time you can ask your smart speaker to play BBC News for Nottingham. Yeah. I think. Yes, that's working. That's good then. Excellent, pleased with that. Getting a bit busy on here now. Put that down there. It doesn't move. Right, let's do a little one. I think this is Commodore related. Yes, it is. It's my little. I forgot what they're called now. Replacement replaces the uh, floppy drive. It's escaped me. GoTech, that's, that's, what that's what I'm thinking of. The GoTech drive. So, this is for my Commodore Amiga computers. I've used my other one in another project, so I need to get another one. Uh, this replaces the floppy drive. So, you can just put all your files on a USB drive. It's got a little LED screen on the front there. And you can just quickly select through, scan through, and load up your files rather than uh, waiting for a floppy disk to load. No quicker. But uh, at least you know it's going to work. There's a lot of floppy disk drives now starting to fail. Well, mine certainly are anyway. Little one. Oh, we need for time because that camera will be cutting out in a bit. It only records for so long before it cuts out. My Canon main camera just there. I think I get to about 25 minutes and it stops because it's not a dedicated camcorder. Oh, it's a pocket TV. Casio. I've gone and scored the box now, opening that. Be the first time I've done that. Let's have a quick look inside. TV 30, it's an early one this is. Is it colour? Big screen. I think it's black and white. Wow. It feels heavy, it must have batteries in it. Oh no it hasn't. Three AA batteries. There we go. Um, the LCD panels in the top, and basically the light coming through the top from your light source illuminates it, and you've got a mirror on the bottom there uh, to see what you're watching. You can see that you can see my, my hand's great in the shadow. Um, I haven't got any batteries to hand to test it, but again, you won't get a signal anyway. I think the ear, if I remember rightly, the earpiece acts as the antenna, if I remember rightly. The instruction manual. Sometimes you have the original receipt in, but not today. I'll just have to show you a close up. Leave that in its box. That's probably from about 88, 89, that one. I do like my pocket TVs, fascinates me. Right, what have we got next? Let's get this one open. What's in here? Was well packed, whatever it is. It might not even be related to what we're uh, talking about, but we'll see. Wow. It's in the Sainsbury box. For a second, there, I thought it was something from straight from the manufacturer. Where, how well it's packed. Oh, it's another TV. What have we got in here? Let's have a look. I must stop buying these little TVs. I just find them so interesting. Wow, Sporter Vision. That's a nice little set. And this one's got the AC power supply built in. This is one of the higher quality ones then. Oh, it's got an LCD clock in it as well. There's a recorder in there, I'll plug it in quick. 
the instruction manual. Something in there that's heavish. Uh, car cord. And yeah, we've got a mains lead. Oh, and the original box is in there. And the aerial adapter. Not about to get out of it today, all these boxes. <laughs> Uh, that's the original box. It's nice to have the original boxes, but the only thing is it's storing them now, isn't it? You just end up having boxes everywhere. Let's plug it in quick, see if it works. I don't remember it being... Well, to be I can't remember buying it, so I can't remember whether they said it was working or not. Let's just make sure it's off before we turn it on. I should imagine the clock will probably need batteries. Right then, fingers crossed it doesn't go bang. Let's see if it lights up. Oh, it's working. Again, we won't get a signal. What we've got on the back there, earphone socket, extra antenna, contrast brightness, V-hole, DC in 12 to 14 volts, center pole positive. Clock's not lighting up, so I guess, I bet you there's a little battery compartment in there. There is a battery compartment, but there's no battery hole there for little ones. Oh, I can see one down in the back there. If you can see that, let's get that bubble wrap off. Bubble wrap is going in. Little bottom cell, if you can see it or not on the top there. What an awkward way of getting the battery in for that. It's going to be fun getting that out. It's well made though. We've got a date code there. October 1992. Wow. Amazing. I might as well put that inside. At least it works. Getting uh, quite a few of these little sets now. What have we got in here? Oh, it's another TV. Oh, I remember this one now. I think they've made a custom box for that. Excellent. This one is quite an interesting. This is a more recent TV, which I didn't know anybody was still making them. This one, not only is colour, if I remember rightly, it's actually digital as well. So it will work on our current television system. So we lost uh, analogue now quite some years ago in England. I know in parts of America, I think they were still broadcasting the, was it about mid-2000, about 2005, 2006 in some parts. It's only a cheap brand, Nikai. So we'll try it quickly, shall we? So let's just plug this in and see if it works. Remember getting my first pocket TV when I was about 14. It's amazing watching TV in bed at night, parents not knowing. Oh, great. Of course, uh, back then, I think, in fact, I've got one. It's this one here. It was that one there. That was my first ever pocket TV. It's a Casio TV 500. It's not the actual one I owned when I was 14. I bought it again. I think it was last year. But it takes four AA batteries and it never lasted very long. Right, let's see what we get on this. It's got a bit of a scratch on the screen, unfortunately. Nothing unfortunate. Extra antenna there. I don't know if we'll get a signal down here. Where's the on button? There we go. It's powering up. No signal. So I'm in a basement, so. Oh, that's a short aerial. Look I don't think we'll get it. I might have to retune it actually because it depends what region it came from. Automatic search, here we go. That's interesting, no battery compartment. I suppose it would draw quite a bit of current being digital. Got some kind of gunk on the back there. So it's mains only. Well, I'll leave that searching while we carry on. You never know, it might find something. Even some headphones, they look like Apple ones, but they're not. Oh, Samsung. Right, what else we got? What have we got here? Oh, it's a uh, game controller. One of my favourite ones, actually. Already got one of these, but I thought I'd have a spare because you don't often see them, and this was cheap. I think I only paid about £8 for it. Quick shot. It's a QS200. 
If you're an avid gamer from the 90s onwards, you'll uh, know that controller. It works with the Amigas, Segas, and so on. Uh, this is a game. Actually, this is a game for an Atari ST, and I don't actually own an Atari ST yet. But, uh, let's get it out and show it to you. There we go. Space 1889. Now I'm into the steampunk scene, so this appealed to me. And I'm just building a steampunk computer. I have the game on the Amiga, just on the floppy disk, but down the box. So I thought I'd get this because I like the artwork on it. That's the card there. I should imagine you have to put all those codes in to get it to load. It was an anti piracy uh, way of doing things back in the day. Got the book here, both, both discs. That's good then. Getting through them now, probably got another half a dozen there. So I think this is going to be longer than I thought. It's going to be probably a half hour video at this rate. I've got to stop testing things. It's so interesting though, isn't it? My brother always says to me I should test more things in my unboxing videos, so it's his fault. got in here. Look. Lots of things. I have no idea what any of this is. Oh it's my Zoid Spares. This is from the Zoidzilla. I won't bother opening it all up. It's basically, I think most of it was here if I'm rightly. I've got a Zoidzilla in bits and uh, I needed some more parts to it. I'll do a, a separate video on that assembling it all. I'll just show you the body because some of you will recognise it. That's the body to it there. Got a big motor, motor battery box in there. That'll be a separate video. That came out around about 85, I think. It's one of my other passions is retro toys from the 80s or 70s and 80s. Another pocket TV. That was in better days. I think I, I, think I only paid. 99p for that one though, I remember now. It wasn't in very good condition. The screen's got quite a few marks on it. TV5100. See what the battery compartment looks like. Oh, it slides off in the front on this one. That's not too bad. A little tiny bit of corrosion on one terminal there, but apart from that it's fine. This one feels heavy. Oh, a couple of video cameras on here somewhere. got here? I have no idea. Oh hang on, I think I remember now. Yes, it's a pair of old video lights. I'll just unbox one of them because they're both the same thing. Oh, bigger than I thought. A couple of video lights, the old ones from the 80s. These use the halogen bulb. Um, probably about a thousand watts each no doubt. Has it got any voltage, uh, voltage on there? Yeah, a thousand watts. But I'm going to modify them. I thought I could use them in the studio. Now you can mount them on a tripod or they can be handheld and the mains powered. So what I'm planning on doing, in fact I can see there's a fan in the back there, is putting uh, LED bulbs in instead because obviously we have LED now. I've got two of these so I thought they'd be quite useful. I think I paid about 8 quid posted for those. This might be a video camera. Oh no, it's got all that messy Corrugated cardboard inside, shredded cardboard. What is in here? Oh, I think it is a camera. It's one extreme to the other, though. They don't put enough around it or they ever do it. Oh dear, it's going to take some cleaning off. <laughs> I'm going to have to give my wife a call in a minute to help me get out of here. <laughs> Right then, let's see what's in here. It says Olympus on the case. So let's have a look. Oh yes, it's an Olympus video camera. I remember it now. God, I bought this ages ago. It's a little one. The cases just smell funky. There we go. 
It's an Olympus VX301E. This is an early one. No year on the front, but I think it's about 83, 84, probably even earlier. But there we go, it shows you inside the equipment you need to use it. Basically, I had a separate VCR with this, VHS VCR, and a separate tuner. It was a portable VCR you put over your shoulder with a strap with four camcorders. Let's quickly put it together. I think that goes in that way. And then plug the viewfinder. Okay, now how you bend that down? The handle bends down, but I don't want to force it because I can't remember which what you press. But basically, it's a shoulder job. The handle will go there, basically. And that was it. The viewfinder cup had broken off, but it doesn't matter. I can glue that back on. Hopefully, it will work tube based, no CCD in this, early autofocus, it's got the um, transmitter and receiver on the front there. Nice little camera that. Right, we'll plug it in quick, let's just see if it works quickly. Got a VCR here. Let's see if it works. Put me out of misery. See that on the camera above, we've got lines on the screen there. But bear in mind, this probably hasn't been plugged in for nearly 30 years. Autofocus is working. Coming through, here we go. This is what I mean with these old cameras. It's still working, look at that, it's suddenly come on. Amazing. Wow. So that wasn't working at first, now it's come back to life after all these years. Remarkable. Bit of plastic there from there. Excellent. It works. Quite a number of these cameras I bought over the years just don't work. Sometimes you plug them in, they work for five minutes and that's it. They just go, give up the ghost. What have we got here? Oh, it's another TV. Yeah, I forgot I bought this one. Right. I found this one. I actually, I bought this off of eBay probably a few weeks back now. And I was in town the other day in a charity shop and they had one in there in a box. Uh, the one in the charity shop was 9.99. I bought it. I forgot I bought this one actually. But these, these have got a composite video on the back. Uh, and video in as well, so you can use them as a little uh, security monitor for old games consoles. Very cheap Chinese black and white TV with an FM radio. But I like them, they have many uses. Let's get this big one open because I know what this is. I've been excited about opening this. I have to do this on my knee because I'm running out of space. I've been after one of these for quite some time. Something I've never owned. Broadcast to go with my um, broadcast cameras there. I don't think you can see it. Oh, you are, can you? There's one just at the back there. Did a video recently on broadcast cameras, old, old ones from the 80s. Okay. Wow. That's nice and small. So what we've got here is a portable Betacam video recorder. I know that's got some connectivity on it. See up the camera above. Look at all that. Takes both cameras. Oh, that's something else. I thought that's what the um, standard definition cameras use, but it's a different connection in this case. That's a camera input there. If this doesn't record, I'll do a close up separately. And then you've got all your composite video in and outs there. Um, components, I think. Lots of connectivity there. Even RF output, which is unusual. This was sold to be as I'm working actually. Mechanically it's fine. 
What's he said? I think he said he couldn't get a picture out of it. But yeah, I can plug my broadcast cameras into this if I get it working and record out on the field with it. Should be interesting. I thought there was another video camera here. Maybe this is it. Probably not because it's such a small box. Unless it's somewhere else. <laughs> oh, it's over there. I'm not going to get to that right now. It's got a bit of weight to it. Packing peanuts. Oh, yeah, this is going to take some tidying up today. Oh. oh, it's a little portable video recorder. Another one. But this one's domestic. After one of these for a while. This is a sharp unit. There we go. So this little sharp portable VHSC video recorder. I have got a couple of JVCs and a Normandy um, clone um, of these, but they don't work. Unfortunately, the lacing up mechanism, the runners, the tracks are plastic and they've cracked. They've got an old basically and just cracked. So the um, arms won't lace up properly. That's a lovely little unit that, it's so small. Got all your controls under there. Camera, takes a battery. I haven't got one of those actually, but it doesn't matter, I'll make one up. And you've got a DC 12 volt input there, plus on the center pin. And hopefully that'll work. It's got a tape in it. It's probably somebody's family video there from the 80s maybe, who knows? I mean, we're getting up to 19 minute mark again. It'll be fun editing this one. No idea what this is. Let's see. Oh, hang on. It's a digital camera. Went through a phase a while ago buying loads of digital cameras. This is one I didn't have the accessories for. I won't get it out. It's basically a DSC FX77 if I remember rightly. Yeah, it's an FX77 with all its dock and everything. Let's have a quick look at it. Fortunately with the Sony's this age, this time period, they have the CCD fault. Oh, it's come on. Let's see if it's, it's amazing. I bought this probably nearly a month ago. Oh, this one's working. I can't believe it. Wow. That's uh, very unusual for these to be working, the F range especially. See that on the top, this fat. Just took that picture there, look. Amazing, can't believe it actually works. And the, and the battery's got a charge. And it's the original battery, Sony MPFC11. Wow. Memory Stick Pro, 256 megabyte. One of the um, original ones, full size. Another proprietary Sony uh, stick. It was not till very later on they started taking SD cards. Right then, this is I think this is the last one. There is a big box over there. I want to get open. I'm sure that's got a video. I know it has got a video camera in it actually. I can't believe I left it all the way over there. Oh. Beta cam tapes. Got four of them. 32 minutes. The thing with beta cam tapes, is they're only short. Some of them factor only even as low as five minutes. So they're just used for adverts. These are brand new. Still got the labels. Wow. I thought I'd better get some to test this out. Right, last one. I have to do this here because I can't get it on the table. This is a very big box. I'm sure what's in it, it's not even that size. But we'll see. It says JVC on it. I don't remember buying a JVC camera. Or did I? I know I bought. I bought a Panasonic recently. I have no idea what's in it. I bet they sent me the wrong thing. I'm sure once I open it, I'll be like, oh yeah, I remember. Have a look. Oh, it's a Super VHS. I remember it now, I do remember. There we go. <laughs> that one there. It's a GR S707. I forgot all about that. 
But I did buy, I'm sure I bought a, Pan a National Panasonic camera. Possible that it hasn't come yet. It's a nice looking camera. It's my first Super VHS machine. I've never had one before. They've always been um, the standard definition. No power supply. Just a shoulder strap. Yeah, no batteries. Well, that went on a lot longer than I thought it was going to. I didn't realise just how much I bought over the last month. Uh, I've got quite a lot of stuff here to go through. We've tested a few things along the way. All the TV seems to be working okay. Uh, it turns out that little portable digital uh, pocket TV has actually got a rechargeable battery built in. Um, I found that out when I accidentally pulled the mains lead out. Um, that's the Panasonic camera I mentioned that I bought that I couldn't find. Um, I unboxed it just off of camera. It's a colour video camera, WV330, tube based. Um, it's got a black and white viewfinder in the back there. When I first plugged it in, there was just a thin white line across the screen. And after a few moments, uh, an image slowly materialised, albeit a very blurry one. Um, it's looking like it might have the infrared filter fault. Either that, or there's just not quite enough light down here to uh, illuminate the tube to get it working properly. But um, I'll test that out in another video. Um, I guess that's just about it for now. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.